Hello, it's Colette. Welcome back to my channel. And today I'm going to do my 13 top tips and techniques to develop as a medium. If you've suspected you've mediumship but you don't know where to go with it, you don't know what to do, you don't know how to get started, then these tips will help you. Uh, they're, they're mine, so they might not match up with anyone else's, but they're what I have um, discovered that I feel you should do and um, I've had a, a long career as a clairvoyant and medium so it's worked for me so let's go 13 top tips I would get yourself a coffee this is not going to be quick <laughs> so here we go the first one I've got is prepare and by that I mean you can't just I'm going to sit down and, and be a medium now. You've got to start the process by preparing. And by that I mean get yourself a comfy chair that you know you'll be able to relax in. Um, get your energies right. Make sure that you're you're going in in an honourable way because this is all noticed by the spirit guides and the spirits. If you think of it, if, if you were wanting someone to come and have a conversation with you um, that maybe you hadn't seen for a while, say they were abroad and they were coming back home and uh, they were coming to you to chat, you wouldn't, well in my opinion, you wouldn't uh, not have nice uh, kind of nice clothes on or you wouldn't not be preparing for them coming getting excited about them coming uh, even making sure that you have uh, the place tidy and not cluttered you want to be seen at your best um, so that you can then be comfortable just to communicate and have fun and listen and in a way it's the same with spirits you want them to come through, you want to show them that you, you've kind of made an effort and some of the tips that follow will, will kind of flow from that. But just think to yourself, you know, if, if you had a guest coming, what would you do to prepare? Um, not just your mindset, but your home or your little, little room that they're going to be in with you. You'd make it pleasant, you'd make it smell nice, you'd, you'd just be wanting to do your best so that that person could relax and you could relax and then the communication would flow so the first thing is to think about being prepared and in that I've got you, you've got to leave the outside world behind you know you've got to be thinking just of what's going to happen next and how you're going to be there for it now the main thing that follows on from that to me is meditate now First of all, with the preparations, you've got to kind of um, drown out the noise from outside. You wouldn't want a guest coming in and, you know, the, the windows all open and like tractors going by or loud noises or, you know, even the dogs barking, this, that and the next thing. You would definitely want to kind of, when they come into your space, you'd want it to be a, a kind of calm, good energy. So you would do these things in a practical way, but meditation helps you in a very, very esoteric way. What it does is it starts to push away and isolate yourself from all the background noises that go on in your head, thoughts coming here, thoughts coming there, because those thoughts that are yours will only get in the way of mediumship coming through. If you're if you're sitting and your head's going, I need to make that for tea tonight, I need to pick this up, I need to do this, how are you going to hear what's coming through from spirit? Because you know, when you first start, um, these messages can be like tiny whispers or they can be um, very quick. So how are you going to allow yourself to hear them if you haven't got the outside world away? And the way to do that is to meditate. Now a lot of people say I can't meditate. Well, I have a playlist of meditations. Go to it, pick one and try it. Some of them are very, very easy and very practical. But even if you were just to sit for a wee while with maybe some... Um, distraction going on in the background, maybe a, a CD of um, rainfall or um, rainforest sounds or the sea. That's okay to do because that in itself is distracting you. It's, it's trying to take your thoughts away. 
So remember what I'm saying, if your brain is full of, um, as my dad used to say, little motors going round and round, you're not going to be able to hear or sense or see what you really need to see. So you have to meditate. There's no doubt about that. You just have to meditate. Um, The third one is very important, is to ask for protection. Now, why do we do that? Well, in anything that you're doing to do with the spirit world or to do with magical practices, you should be protected. Now, you can visualise your cocoon of uh, white light round about you. You can cast a circle um, or you can um, ask your angels, your guides to bring in a sense of protection. And it's important that you do that because, to be honest, there People will say it's all love and light out there. It's not. There are negative entities. There are negative energies. And anyone that opens up to this stuff is like a little beacon of light. They have to be. They have to be seen. You're pulling your light up so that they can see it. And that hopefully will attract the beings that want to pass on messages or want to reassure you, even your own people. But it can also attract negativity. So... As far as I'm concerned, I would never start a meditation um, without having protection up. Um, and to be honest, the way I do that is I, I keep a, a kind of area or circle of protection um, in one room all the time. And it's the room that I do my meditation in and even my filming in. And it's always there. But every so often, I will still give it a sense of... Um, empowering so please look at some videos if you're new to this protection is important if you're drawn to angels then ask the angels for protection if you're drawn um to more of the practices where you put up your own protection with circles with salt etc use that but don't go a step further here without doing it we'll just stop the video here if you're not going to protect yourselves, okay? So, bear it in mind and don't go a step further than this until you've put up protection. So, I'm quite disciplined and uh, I want you to be disciplined too. So, ask for protection from guides, angels, etc. That is um, very, very important. That's number three. Number four is something that I've done for a long, long time. And it's, I assign a channel for the, them to come through. Now, that might sound odd, but what happens when I started mediumship, um, I used to get quite dizzy because I'd get something over here, something over there. Um, <laughs> I literally got dizzy, like, right, okay, I'll take that, I'll take that. Now, my guide has always stood um, over there, and that's where I look at him. And uh, always, he knows that's, that's where he'll appear. He knows that's where I'll see him. Um, when I started mediumship, as I said, the guide tend, my guide always, even as a wee girl, he would tend to stand in front of me to that side. But other spirits didn't. And initially I was all dizzy and I was trying, you know, it was like almost playing a, a game of pinball where you were just looking for the next the next thing. And one day um, a lady came through and she just stood and stood to the side and she wasn't saying anything. And um, I, I got on with uh, doing my reading and um, bit by bit she came closer and closer and closer. And it was getting a wee bit like, oh, she's, she's getting awful close. And before I knew it, she went round the back of me and then went into my body. She was basically um, wanting to use my body to talk to the person that was there. Uh, this, in a way, is called trans mediumship, and it can. Uh, there's many people do it, and many people feel comfortable with it, but I don't. Um, I feel if you've done trans mediumship, you know that it is, can be very, very draining. So anyway, this this lady went in, and I was very unhappy with her, and poof, back out again, and I thought. Literally, you know, yes, my guide was there. He didn't protect me against her going round the back of me. And the reason he did that was to let me learn my lesson. So after that, when I opened up for mediumship, I said, I will be looking here. 
So if you want to come through, that's where you come through. And I also gave up that I will not allow anyone to use my body. I'm not a trans medium, so that's that's the bottom line. Please know that this is a two-way conversation. You have a large degree of control as the medium. Um, and, and people forget that. They say, well, this happened and that happened. And I say, well, why didn't you say stop? Enough or no? Be oh, I can't do that. You know, there's spirits. And that's no, 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 no. Basically, if you do not want a spirit to come behind you or to you know, to make you feel uncomfortable, then you set your parameters for the reading. And with me, it's my guides there. There's a channel beside them. If you come there, I will look, I will see, I will hear, but nowhere else. And if you watch some of my mediumship videos that I do, the mediumship Mondays, etc., you'll see that when I'm talking to my guide, it's there. And then I'm always looking at the one place. It never changes because anything coming through anywhere else is just either not allowed or they know that I'm not going to play ball with them unless they interact with my parameters. So please, would you understand that? Say I'm comfortable with you coming through but there, um, or I'm comfortable to hear you but not see you, or I'm comfortable to feel you but not see you. Where you need to be, your intuition will tell you. If you would feel frightened if a spirit manifested, don't go there yet. You can build up to that. So set your own parameters and as I say, if you follow me, it's like guide there, other people there. And you know, when I used to do readings, I'd say, oh, there's someone coming through the channel and that's what it feels like. It literally feels as though they're almost parachuting down and then they have to get out the channel before someone else can get in. That's how tight I have that. And I think that's why I've, um, as far as the, the gifts concerned is, I've not burned out with it. Yes, my body and everything you know if you watch me you'll know I've got various autoimmune diseases and stuff but I think I've kept myself uh, my psyche from burning out by setting parameters and letting them know that I'm very willing to pass things on but only if it's with my rules as such so um sometimes you need to be a wee bit bolshy you know so that's the assign a channel where they can come and then stay and that way you'll be able to avoid trans mediumship or um, any people going in, any spirits using your body. Now if you've got your guides up, that possibly shouldn't happen unless they want you to have that experience so that you can either say, oh yes that was okay or oh, no, with me it's a no. Um, right, five, this is an important one. Um, Ask and invite, but never call or conjure. Um, there's a thing called necromancy, which is bad. That's when magicians or whatever would pull a dead person, pull a spirit towards them. And um, my book, uh, I've got it here, um, Memoirs of a Clairvoyant, there's a whole section in that on mediumship, ghost busting, you name it. Now, I believe that one of my daughters would have been would be dead through an accident, but for a family member in spirit that got there and protected her. And I felt, what if someone had been pulling that spirit forward? Say, uh, say a person had gone to a medium that then asked for the name of the person, called it, called it, tried to pull it forward. Um, then my daughter would be dead, I'm sure of it. So never, if you go to a medium and they say, can I have the person's name, that in effect, they're going to be saying, right, okay, Margaret, we need you now, come forward for your, no, I would not advise doing that. And I've watched some videos and there are people that work with a name and then get all sorts of things from the name, but I, I don't agree with that because that spirit could be somewhere else doing something important and you're distracting them. And that one distraction 
could lead to problems elsewhere. So ask and invite, and by that I mean sit down, you've done all the other things and you say, I'm ready spirit. Um, I welcome any spirits that want to come through. And if you're doing readings, say for all the clients that come tonight or whatever, um, with me it would be like, now I do it online, it's um, for anyone that my platform is for, which can be YouTube or Facebook or whatever. But literally you're saying there are people that will be coming or will be watching. Please um, allow the spirits to come through for those people if they have a message and say, I invite you if it be your will. If it be your will, you're not distracting a spirit, you're not conjuring them or pulling them, whether with emotion or magically, you are simply leaving it open. They can see you if they want to come through and they can come through because sometimes they can, then that's the way to do it. So please, 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 no taking a name and repeating it, repeating it, repeating it, seeing what you're getting. That's, that's playing with fire because you don't know what that spirit should be doing maybe in another place or another realm and as I say if you watch other videos and talk to other people you'll find that they don't have a problem with this um, I do so it's up to you but I personally have a problem with that to me if someone comes through and I can't get a name I will I will see what else I can get maybe a date maybe the way they pass maybe uh, things about family but a lot of the time the name is the thing that does it or like my mum had a very common name and I had a wonderful medium tell me something very specific to three operations she's had and I knew it was her because of that so please 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 ask and invite generally for the people that will be waiting on the messages okay please understand that so number six a very simple one um if you're struggling a wee bit or even if you just want to use a, a crystal that can help open you up the two crystals i use um are fluorite and labradite now the reason for them i, I just i love fluorite for any form of psychic opening up whether it's third eye chakras you know you name it and it's also a very good stone to get you ready to uh, receive messages um I always wore a huge big um, pendant of fluorite around my neck when I was reading and it not only looked beautiful but it was there for, it did a job basically it really did a job labradite um, it's just it's just one of those crystals that it makes you feel empowered and good and ready and open. So, you know, it, you need a wee bit of help. It's fair enough. Get a wee bit of help. These wonderful crystals have been put here for their reasons. And these two in particular are there to help you with your clairvoyance and your mediumship and all the other clairsentient and um, clairs that are out there. So yeah, that's a, a good one. Now, number seven um, will be the one that some of you think, oh, I don't know, I can do this. Um, banish your imagination. Now, remember when we're teaching you to meditate and stuff, we're actually actively asking you to let your imagination read you. But with mediumship, it's different. It's a bit like the, the imagination is like the thoughts that come before you meditate if you are working with your imagination then you're not truly getting a message if you see what I mean and that's where people do come with the question how do I know if it is my imagination or I really got there and I'll tell you the next one down maybe how that works um, but uh, your imagination needs to be kind of banished when you're doing mediumship you can't get something through and then instead of giving it just let your imagination take you to this place that place or whatever now it's only with time patience and practice that you will be able to know the difference that oh that was my imagination kicking in there oh, i got that name and immediately i know a person that name so i thought of them and their glasses and i thought of the way they go to work that's imagination 
that's that's your brain kicking in and you don't want your brain kicking in your imagination is in your mind's eye mediumship is in your third eye it's in your third ear it's in your crown chakra it's it's totally different senses to it's not the mind it's your it's your six senses that you use um so please this will take time but the more you do it the more you'll be aware of and i still do it you know when you know i'll be like giving a reading and it will maybe come through as an unusual name and i maybe knew someone like that and i'll maybe get a wee picture of them but it's not about them that's my connection and i immediately have to go no mm. but if you've done your meditation and you've got yourself purely open up and you've got your crystals it gets less and less likely to happen okay so that's a hard one but no one said this had to be easy nobody at all so where do we go next ah right now following on from that how do you know if it's your imagination or if it is mediumship practice with a friend or family or a circle for validation right if you are giving lots of stuff from your imagination and you're with a group that you trust or people that you trust they'll not go yeah 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 you go to a lot of mediumship nights and you'll see people taking things that you know really aren't for them and it's because they're desperate for a for a message and that's fine but I've looked and watched and I've seen maybe three hands go up for one message and yes it really is only for one person a lot of people are taking the the things and some are taking some of it but not all of it and bit by bit you can see the people that are just going yes yes that's that's my dad that's my dad and then you see the one person that's taking everything that's been given they then give validation now if you can start off with a good pal or a family member or find yourself a mediumship circle maybe in a spiritualist church or a psychic development circle that also has a place for mediumship um, development in it this is when you'll get validation and I ask you if you are in a place where messages are coming forth be very very honest with the person that's giving it don't say yes when it's a no don't say ah that could be for me when really well it could a wee bit but that person over there it really is for them because they can take it all so please when you're sitting in a circle be honest with your validation giving out false yeses does not do a medium any good when when they're training and when they're trying to move forward in a way it distracts them because if they've got something from their imagination and you say yes then they're not saying ah, that was imagination that was me that was my head running away so you please 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 learn to um validate the readings and if you are the medium that's practicing know the people that you're reading for and know that they will give you good validation ask them to be honest ask them to be truthful tell them they'll not hurt your feelings if you are way off on a tangent away in la la land giving this that and the next thing trust them and ask for critique and bit by bit you'll get better and better okay so that's important as well um now the other thing is don't embellish what you hear or see or and don't add your own opinion right so you're sitting away and you get maybe the end of a phrase give that don't add your own stuff to it and I was so prone to do this when I started off and thank goodness my guide used to be right at the side of the channel and he'd go White Storm used to just put his hand up just flag his hand up like what uh, and I'd be like oh so basically if you get something give it but nothing else you don't say oh i see a man in a coat um and the coat's got a symbol on it and you get the symbol and you pass it over okay then you try to see what you think the symbol is and you get it totally wrong so instead of just describing the symbol you're actually saying oh that 
is a sailor symbol or that's RAF or oh that's like a football club symbol you don't know I once gave a woman um the <laughs> I once gave the woman um the uh where her her husband would be from many years ago um because I thought I was getting it very strong because it was a flag and the flag <laughs> the flag um was a red cross on a white background so I immediately said he was going to be Swiss because that was the flag of Switzerland but it wasn't it was the flag of England because I'd got it the wrong way around um now she uh when she met her husband he actually had um he actually had the the thing on and she recognised with what I was saying that that was what I'd given her so if I just left it it was a red cross on a white background she could have made her own uh, you know she could have looked into it what was that flag or oh I know that's the English flag no not me I added on that it was a Swiss flag and she would meet a, someone from Switzerland now that's the damage you do <laughs> if you don't be careful <laughs> And I have stories like this over 30 years, believe me. And I've learned from every single one of them. Every single one of them. Um, another time I embellished something, I'd, uh, I think a Jasper come through. And I thought, well, the only Jasper I would know about is the chap from Lincoln Park. Blah, blah, blah. And it's the spirit, as the spirit likes Lincoln Park and the women looked to me like eh, no and I was like okay I, I got the name Jasper and she said yes that, that was my cat <laughs> so they actually got the name but I embellished it Jasper what's that that's a silly name can't give that and then I put it into that that was about someone that um, liked Lincoln Park do you see where I'm coming from this is not spirit giving the wrong things. This is mediums taking it and rolling with it. And I have done it, but I want you to learn from that. So please don't embellish. And also, if you get something that you think is a bit weird, and you like, I'm not going to say that. Um, I'm not going to say that. I've had a few names come through that I've thought, they're weird, absolutely weird. Well, I'm, I'm getting it wrong. And then when I've given, the person would say, oh, yes, Peachy, that, that was his nickname. You know what? Please give what they're giving and no more. But also, don't be afraid to give what they're giving. Don't embellish things. Learn from me. Um, normally, people that talk a lot and like to speak a lot uh, can embellish. Uh, so if, if the person um, likes to speak a lot and, and chat and make jokes and stuff, you'll find that they maybe will embellish without really realising it. That makes them less of a good medium, okay? The number 10, uh, know when to stop. There comes a time in a reading, whether um, it's 10 minutes, 15 minutes, half an hour, where you'll feel the energy just drop. Your energy will drop if you're working with a channel. The energy in the channel will drop. I actually see the channel almost start to like pixelate. It pixelates up when it opens and it pixelates down when it closes. Uh, so if the channel's starting to pixelate and my energies are going the um, it's time to stop. And there'll always be a row of spirits wanting your time and energy because you're, you're open and, and you know they maybe can get a message through you. But you'll burn out if you don't know when to stop. Okay, so know when to stop. Now following on from that, number 11, don't dilute your mediumship. There's a time and a place for everything. Now I'm going to again get a wee bit bullshy here. This is a gift. This is something that is a responsibility. This is something that should be honoured. Mediumship should not be diluted. And by what I mean is, if you're giving readings, then you set up, you do all these things and you give your readings and then you close down, that's it. Now, if you're maybe with friends or family and you see a spirit coming through and it's something important, then fair enough, 
you can maybe pass it on, but you need to think first. Is this the right place? Will someone be upset? Is it confidential? Could I take that person aside and say? But to be honest, um, there are some people that maybe will be out in a night out and say, oh, I think I've got your nan and blah, 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 blah. And there's maybe drink involved. And before you know it, they're giving out readings and all that, you know. And no, that's not the way to honour a gift. You shouldn't be sitting in the hairdressers giving out messages. You shouldn't be walking in to Greg's for your lunch and saying, oh, you've got a spirit behind you. How dare you? How dare you? How dare you do that? There's a time and a place. People may not want the message. You need to have them in a one-to-one -one situation or them coming to you as part of a group. In a way, they've made that contract with you. They are coming. They are there. You're the conduit. But walking about and randomly giving messages, you, you have no right to do that because you do not know if the other person is at the right time after a bereavement or whatever to receive that message. Now we'll maybe go into that in um, a lot more detail in another um, video, but I'd, I'd like you to comment on that and how you feel about that, because I know people that are very open mediums feel that it's fine to literally be open to firing messages out whenever they get them. I truly don't. and. To be honest, it's led to an awful lot of disappointments because um, if I'd been invited when I was younger out to a party and, you know, I've been invited because um, people liked me or they were friends, but I've also been invited because that's the clairvoyant that was on the telly and people gather and when I'm on a night out, I'm in a night out. If I have a wee drink, I will not open up to anything. If I um, are there to enjoy myself, I don't want the responsibility of having to make sure that that message goes to the right person or whatever. Think about it. Don't dilute your mediumship. Your mediumship is a gift. There's a time and there's a place. And I know I've disappointed many people um, by simply being collect, boring collect, rather than collect the clairvoyant and medium. Um, because to me, that's my downtime as well. Anyway, <laughs> these are things that don't really happen now that I've retired, but they are worthwhile for you to know. So don't dilute your mediumship, number 11, there's a time and a place. Number 12, be disciplined practice, meditate, even make sure that you, you say, right, okay, I want to practice this and I'll make a time every week for it. If you're consistent with it, even the spirits get to know that, oh, Friday night, eight o'clock, she's sitting in a chair. It's two-way conversation. It's a two-way thing. I, I've i used to read and maybe um, I've... Uh, had a, a spirit around for maybe a week before the person come in and I know that they're waiting for that person and I'll go like, go away. You know, you can come through when it's them. Just don't tire yourself out. Um, so it, it's important that you can be quite consistent with that and go to a maybe a circle that runs the same time or that you say, I will be sitting in my chair uh, and I would welcome you all, but give me half an hour to meditate and get ready and then I'll be ready. So it, it's very, very important that you're disciplined. All the steps that I've said involve discipline. They involve discipline in your, um, your mind, disciplining yourself um, as to what you do and how you prepare, disciplining your ego so that you don't become too egotistical about your gift, about your, your gift, sorry. Uh, so discipline and practice. Now, number 13, again, follows on from that. Be professional. If you want people to come to you, if you want to be able to pass on messages, you must be seen as professional. Think of ethics in many professions, the ethics of confidentiality, the ethics of um, 
being aware of who the person is and maybe the problems and things that you've got to understand about them before you make a call as to whether you should read for them or not. Um, it's very much about looking at your own life. Look at your own ethical code. How would you like to be treated? And if you do that, you'll be able to transfer that to your mediumship and clairvoyance. Um, I had a very, very strong ethical code when I was a pharmacist and I just transferred it to my um, clairvoyant business when I opened up. I thought about confidentiality. I thought about, you know, having a very safe place for people to talk to me. Um, I thought about things that, you know, it's not appropriate to laugh there. It's not important to have a wee joke there. How do you dress? I mean, things like that. Be professional. You don't need to go out dangling crystals all over you and be in velvet with black eyeliner. Um, I, I know that sounds silly, but don't be a cliché. <laughs> please. I love my crystals, I love my earrings, I love all these things, but, you know, I, w I would stop at having one or two pieces on not 16. <laughs> um, yes, we like to maybe be beautiful, we do like lovely things, lovely fabrics or whatever, but don't be a cliche of a medium, please. Be professional, be ethical, and don't be a caricature. Um, and with that, I'll love you and leave you. I hope you can take these on board and I sincerely hope you'll use them. Some you may not agree with, that's fine. This is just what I've garnered over years and years of successful mediumship. And I, I enjoy passing these things on because, you know, um, I've retired from it now, apart from online uh, here. I want you to know all the pitfalls. I want you to know the things I've been through, the silly things I've done. Uh, so please know that this is all done for you and spoken with a good and honest heart, an honourable heart, not meant to upset anyone in any way. So I hope you like that. As I say, there are uh, stories of my mediumship development in Memoirs of a Clairvoyant by Colette Brown. And please comment and like and subscribe. Tell me if you're a medium how you work. Let me know if you agree or disagree with what I've said. Let's have a good communication, a channel that is about communication and comments. Many blessings. Thank you for watching. Bye now.